Good morning, everyone. How are you today? It is a little chilly and a little drizzly outside, but inside we'll talk about water in a different kind of way today. Um, hi, I'm Anna Walker, otherwise known as Felt It, and usually you see me coming um, to visit you with projects that involve fiber and felting and, and fiber art, um, but for the last several weeks I've had the great joy of being here every day, Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. to share a little art project, a little internet create date um, with all of you, and I'm so glad that you've joined me. Um, we are going to finish up this week and then we're going to take a summer break and I'll be back in the fall if we're all still on, uh, you know, closer to safe at home orders. Um, and, you know, we'll see how that looks this fall. Um, but for the rest of this week, we're doing play day fun. We're doing, you know, uh, fun things like our pom-pom shooters yesterday, which actually went to my grandsons. Um, and actually I got dad one too, so he can, you know, hold his own against the two grandsons. Um, but today we're going to create sponge bombs so that we can have fun when it's a little warmer outside and have some water fun that makes it a little easier to play with and um, more uh, fun to play with because you don't have to worry about picking up those exploded water balloon uh, plastic pieces. Um, you can just grab a sponge bomb and get it wet and bomb somebody else. So without further ado, let me turn the camera down and let's get started. Okay, so today's supplies are really simple. You need two sponges, the kind that don't have any scrubbies on them. You need some string, and you need a pair of scissors. That's it. So what we're going to do, I'm going to put this one kind of right over here. There we go. We are going to take each of our sponges, and we are going to cut them into four. Now, you could do this the short way if you wanted to. It would make it a little more difficult to um, get the string around the middles of them. But, you know, if you want to go this way, you certainly can. Um, but I like the long legs that we get by cutting down the long side. And then we've got a sponge bomb that's really got lots of fingers out there. So it can have a lot of fun. And... I'm, I, I'm almost embarrassed to make this our, our project for today because it is so simple, but this is something that you can create with easy dollar store items. You can get the sponges at the dollar store. If you can't find the flat sponges like this that don't have scrubbies on them, you can um, take and cut up some car wash sponges. Those are, are bigger and fluffier, so you could take a serrated bread knife. Actually, hang on a sec. I've got one over here. I'm still here. So if you can't find the regular sponges like this, you can always get one of these car wash sponges. I'm going to show you what you do with it. Because some of you might not be able to find these at the dollar store. Um, my son went and did my shopping for me and he couldn't find them at the dollar store. So he got me these um, car wash sponges. These will work just fine. What you'd need to do is just take a serrated bread knife and cut them nice and even and then cut strips and then cut strips the other way so that you've got the strips that you need to be able to do your sponge. Okay, that's really all there is to it. You could certainly take this. I'm thinking out loud here. You could certainly take this and take two of them and cut them all the way down and then put them catty corner Okay, so put them perpendicular to each other and then squish them and those would make some really big sponge bombs. So that's another idea that you could use. But anyway, let's get back to this. So I am just laying these on their sides. So the fatter portion, is. see if I put them down like this, they look like the regular sponge. I want them to be a little skinnier. So I'm gonna tilt them up on their edges, okay? And then I'm going to take and stack these in an alternating pattern. You don't have to, but I got two colors, so why not have some fun? And so we've got a cool little checkerboard kind of look to it, all right? So everything's all together. All we need is a piece of string. Now, I am making the string a lot longer than what I will need it to go around because I want to make sure I've got plenty that I can take and I can 
pull very, very, very tightly. I want to put the string as close to the middle as I can. Take the ends, and yeah, they'll fall off sometimes, and that's okay. And what I want to do, I'm going to show you this slower. I want to do the first part of a surgeon's knot because I want the string to hold really tight. So I'm going right over left and under, and then I'm going under again, okay? And I'm going to pull this, make sure that it's right here in the middle, and then I'm going to pull it as freaking tight as I possibly can. And then I'm going to turn around on this other side, and I'm going to do the same thing right over left and under and under pull it tight nice and tight and then i'm going to do left over right and under and we've got our sponge bomb made and then it's just a matter of twisting your pieces to make that bomb shape and to make that rounded shape and you can just sort of take each of them and sort of twist them next to one that's right next to them to get that rounded shape. But you get the idea. That's how easy it is to make today's project. That's it. And then all we have to do is just trim off our threads. I'm not going to trim all the way down to the knot. I'm going to leave a little bit of it there. And if you wanted to, if you wanted to make these as indestructible as you could, um, you could either put a little dot of glue or a little dot of nail polish there. But that is all there is to making these cool sponge bombs. That's it. What do you think? Should I make another one? All right, I'll make another one. I got enough for two more. Let's make two more. And then I'll have four sponge bombs. I keep wanting to say sponge bob, so maybe I need to come up with another half to this. Sponge bomb square, I don't know. Is it gonna work? You'll have to help me with that. If you can think of something that'll make it work, you let me know, okay? And then again, we're just cutting it in half and then cutting each of those sponge pieces in half again. Such an easy, fun way to make some outdoor water play toys. And you don't have to use contrasting colors. I think it looks kind of fun to have the contrasting colors, but you could certainly make them all in the same color. Just depends on the um, packages of sponges that you can find, right? Now I did, while well, we did have trouble finding these sponges at the dollar store, they were readily available at my grocery store. So that wasn't a problem. And at the grocery store, this pack of four sponges was less than $3. So it's even a better deal than the dollar store where you might get two sponges for a dollar, okay? And here we go again, just cutting in half and cutting in half again and in half again. And so we'll have our two piles for our two sponge bombs. This is so much fun and so easy to do. And you know what? Water balloons are great and hoses are a lot of fun, but water balloons can get kind of pricey sometimes and they get really messy a lot of the time. Um, so, you know, this is something that you can do that's not gonna be so expensive and so messy. And we're just gonna turn it this way. And there's our one stack. And now we'll do our next stack. And the cool thing about these, instead of water balloons, is that you can reuse them over and over and over. Because all you gotta do is, and they're easy to find too. You know how water balloons are sometimes pretty small? Um, and they can get, you know, the plastic can get lost when they explode. Well, these aren't gonna get lost. You're gonna be able to see these from a long distance away. And all you gotta do is go back to your water source, get them wet again, and boom, you're ready to bomb somebody else with one of these sponge bombs. I'm having way too much fun seeing sponge bomb. Someone's gonna have to help me, you know, figure out a nice little tagline for this. All right. 
Make sure it's in the middle as much as you can, although it really doesn't matter a whole lot. Flip it over, do the same thing on the other side, right over left and under and under, pull tight, and then left over right and under, and there's our knot. And you see how it bunched up a little bit here from the other side? I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to make sure I don't cut it when I trim off these ends. And then just twist these up to make your SpongeBob bomb shape. See, I almost said SpongeBob. And you could do these in a lot of different colors. Remember how yesterday when we were doing our um, pom-pom shooters, we had different colors for each of the pom-pom shooters? You could do different colors for each friend and you could, you know, make a target and you could have target practice with your sponge bombs. You could do all kinds of fun water games with these. Let me get this slid over here and get this put right back. And you notice I didn't get them all straight. Some of them are crooked. It's no big deal. It is no big deal. They are going to get your friends and your siblings wet no matter what. But always, always, always make sure that you have permission to play with these. And these are not indoor toys, friends. These are outdoor toys. Right over left, under, and under again. Pull it as tight as you can. The reason we do that under and under again is so that it'll hold it steady for us. It'll hold that knot so that we won't have to worry about it coming loose and then having to tighten it up again. Right over left and under and under again. Pull it tight and then left over right and under and nice and tight. Trim off our ends so that we've got just a little bit left. No one's going to see those ends anyway because they're going to be worried about what's going to be coming at them when you're sending these flying in the air. And then just twist them around until you've got a shape. It really doesn't matter. These are going to get you wet no matter what shape they're in. And they're going to be a lot of fun. Plus, because they've got a, a larger thing to grab at, if you've got little brothers or sisters or little cousins that you're playing with, you know, I'm thinking like three or four years old, they can grab hold of these better than they can a regular ball or even a water balloon. So there we go. We got a whole pile of sponge bombs to make us have some, let us have some really fun water fun during the summer. Now, I promised last week that I would show you a little bit of my felting stuff that I worked on over the weekend. And this is... A felt painting that I'm working on. This is my tool here. These are some of the fibers that I've been working with on this felt painting. And this tool has, can you see the needles shimmering there? This tool has lots, it has three needles in it. And what I do is I lay down the fiber and then I just make sure that I poke that fiber into this wool fabric that's underneath. And when you look at it from the underneath side, you can see that the fibers go through and they connect and they make a new fabric. And so this is the painting that I'm working on right now. It, you also have individual needles that you can use. And this is needle felting. This is one of the types of felting that I do, but this is a painting that I'm working on. And I'll show you more over the summer as I'm working on it so that you can see what's going on. Um, but let me flip the camera up and I will say, hey, I'm so glad that you came and joined me today. The camera's a little crooked there. Um, tomorrow is going to be a longer project. So if you haven't already, go out and find four sticks that are about this long and as straight as you can get them and they need to be sturdy sticks. So if they're, if they're really bendy, probably not gonna work. Let me show you what I found. I had, see mine's a little bit bigger, but it's bigger so that you can see it a little easier, okay? And I'm gonna show you tomorrow how we're gonna put this loom together and then we're gonna warp it up and we're going to add some fibers 
and some yarns and some pretty strings and we're going to make a beautiful weaving okay so thank you for being here today um, if you want to follow along with my summer adventures in felting make sure that you head over to stab things into existence.com and until tomorrow I'll see you later bye guys <laughs>